Hi, and welcome to the Financial Fox. Today on the show, we are going to talk about investing in gold, specifically putting the spotlight on a listed company which has made significant progress with this project and is now entering the crucial phase of mine construction. I'm talking about Condor Gold, a London and Canadian listed company, a junior developer and explorer working to bring its La India gold mine in Nicaragua into production. It has all the permits, has also high grade deposit, good infrastructure, full government support and strong economics, and is also considered by many analysts to be materially undervalued compared to its peers in Canada and also North America. There are many questions about its strategy and financing, which still need to be addressed. So we have asked investors to send us questions, which I will post to the CEO and chairman, and let's see what he has to say. Let's welcome to our show, Mark Child, chairman and CEO of Condor Gold. Hi, Mark. How are you? Uh, well, thanks, Stefani. You are just back from Nicaragua, I understand, where uh, drilling has started. So maybe to kick off, do you want to briefly summarize how things are progressing on site and when we should expect some initial drilling results? Uh, yes, certainly. I've just had uh, four, four out of the last eight weeks in Nicaragua and quite a lot of that time on site. Uh, we're doing 4,000 meters of infill drilling. Um, and the drill results from that will be end of February, early, early March. Uh, we're also doing some geotechnical drilling in 15 drill holes. Uh, we've been purchasing loads of land and we have a significant advance a lot of the engineering studies. Okay, I have a few questions for you sent by our investors. So hopefully uh, your answer will help to clarify a few points as well. So first of all, are you close to get a tool agreement and how might the signing of that affect your strategy? Uh, we've been in negotiations for a, a toll milling agreement for, for, for 12 months. Uh, there's a nearby mill uh, that has 60% uh, spare capacity. Um, and but that also needs two people to sign uh, an, an agreement. We've made it clear we're, we're keen to progress with a toll milling agreement. Um, how, if it comes off, one of the, on our announcement on the 7th of December, we uh, infill drilling in, a, in feeder pits, which uh, uh, a high grade and there's a four gram pit there with 59,000 ounces of gold so we could a toll mill that 59,000 ounces of gold uh, over to truck it over to the nearby processing plant so the, how does it impact the strategy well well that you're just looking there at 1800 dollar gold price you're looking at about 92 million us dollars of revenue uh on our own mining costs if we did that ourselves we'd have about 65 million dollars of free cash flow coming out of that so we could do a thousand tons of take toll milling from it uh, if we chose and if we agree something. So it would fast track us into production should we uh, reach an agreement with them. Um, that means, in terms of strategies, it means we could go for a slightly smaller plant because we'd be having uh, early cash flow from that plant, from toll milling. Um, uh, and obviously it stops us coming back to the market because we've got revenues and free cash flow. Okay, how many artisan miners are working on Metiza and when will they move to another site? Uh, we own all the land on the Steezer area and uh, in the month of October there were 20, on average daily 20 artisanal miners. Uh, there's a con because we own the land uh, they have to sign a contract with us to relocate when we want them to relocate so moving them off isn't, isn't a difficulty. Now artisanal mining if you own the land most, most farmers charge the artisanal miner 20% of the ore that they're taking off. We don't charge anything, so they keep 100%. That's why they like to come on our land. Okay, so you mentioned about the land. We understand the purchase of the remaining land isn't a concern for you, but I assume that should happen before any financing or production decision. Have you got a specific time frame for that to be concluded? Um, we're running the projects if we have 100% of the land. So the land for us operationally is a non-issue. We have 100% of the land on the plant location, the training storage facility, the explosive magazines, the water retention dam, uh, the roads and infrastructure. We have 96% of the pit as we speak, we have about 95% of the waste dump. So, and the government will help us get the balance of the land. So uh, it'll just fall into place. So we are talking over the next 
few months, uh, you know, then I see. Yeah, months. yes, that's right. Well, uh, but because we can we can go ahead and construct the, the mill. Will, if we build the mill, it'll to be once it arrives, it's a 12 month construction period. So we have all the land for building the processing plant and uh, the tailing storage facility in the main areas I just mentioned. So the balance of bits and pieces will and it might fall in over the next two, three months, but it's it's a non issue for us. Okay, perfect. So you have the permits, the government support, and also high grade deposit. All you need is the capital to finance production. So there are right. obviously different ways to structure that. Can you yeah. expand on the different scenarios and what would be your preferred option? Well, for, for, firstly, um, you know, the man, the directors have twenty percent of the company. Uh, we're looking at. Uh, uh, doing this in two stages. So we'd like to go with a smaller plant of 1,500 tonnes a day as opposed to 3,500. So and do a stage, two stage approach. Uh, the capex on that's like to be around about 60, 70 million dollars. We've actually just engaged last week, uh, like a podium again, to revisit capex numbers. In terms of the financing mix, you're typically 60, 40 debt to equity, but uh, there are many local banks, so we have local banks, regional banks interested in financing that we've had discussions with. We can also put gold loans into, into the mix, but we're looking at the financing mix uh, actively as to how we finance the mine. Can you give investors a specific time frame of when a production decision and financing will be announced to the market? I mean, in the past, uh, I believe you mentioned Q1 2021. Is that still the case? The production decision has been made. We're going to production. So it's not to be made, it's been made. And we'll actually, we've said it earlier in the statement that we'll start site preparation this year. And we intend to do that. And there'll be an announcement of the stock market, um, hopefully this week on site preparation. Um, in terms of the, 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 the finance or the construction part of it, it's typically a 12 month construction period for a, for a small mill. Okay, uh, the government is massively supportive of the project, which is great, but would it also be involved in any corporate activity? What I mean is that would the government take part in, uh, the, in the negotiation process or have anything to say about the sale of the mine? Well, we're not looking to sell the mine, um, firstly. We're looking to construct and operate the mine and then double the ounces to five million as our strategy. If someone was to buy us, they'd obviously have to do due diligence. And part of that due diligence would be talking to the government. I'm sure that and no one's going to spend whatever they're going to, if that happened, they spend several hundred million dollars, they're going to want to talk to the government. But the key thing is that all the licenses and permits are granted within our local wholly owned subsidiary companies, Landia Gold SA and Condor SA, and Landia Version SA. So anybody buying it would buy the top coat i.e. the UK company, and they'd own those operating subsidiaries which have all the permits, so I, I, I think it's a non-issue. Calibre also bought B2 Gold Mines last year, and a Colombian company bought Hemco about six years ago, so uh, without in, any interference from the government. Okay, I understand you can't say much about any approach from other buyers, but what would be an ideal candidate buyer? Oh, if I speculated, which I probably shouldn't, uh, you want cash because that cash is king and it's clear what they're paying rather than having to do due diligence on someone else's company for their shares uh, and a large TSX or London or Australian listed company. Okay. The management, uh, I mean, yourself and Jim Mellon owns a significant percentage of the company share to basically yeah. control the board. So let's imagine this, this scenario that if a buyer comes with an offer, would the, what would be a fair price for the management to consider? I think it would be irresponsible for me to speculate on prices uh, at this time. So I, I'm just going to decline that comment. I think I, you know, analysts will value the company uh, and you can see that WH Ireland's recent research put £1.70 a share uh, on, on their research note. Um, I don't want to be drawn into speculation about what management would consider for something that's not even there. Okay, so you mentioned about analysts and uh, picking up on this point, many analysts as well as, uh, um, you know, also the management believe that the company is uh, uh, really undervalued compared to its peers. Uh, yeah. Quite a few times you stated that the Lando market isn't really appreciating junior mining companies. And uh, 
condo gold remains significantly undervalued. Can you say more about that? Yes, I mean, the London, the London market name doesn't have a great history of uh, funding exploration and development companies. They much prefer gold producers and cash flow and dividends. And so they prefer the bigger companies that, uh, in, in production. Uh, Canada is a better home and Australia is a better home for mining because there's lots of active operating mines in the country. And there are hardly any in the UK, so you know, gold mines. Um, so, so in terms of us, that that that's one of the one of the angles of where we are. We have a dual listing on Canada, but we haven't placed any shares there yet. Although that's open to us in the future to get liquidity going there, should we choose during the as part of the financing capital uh, for the mine. Okay, not many gold funds are actually investing in condo gold despite its potential. Why is that? And uh, from your conversation, when do you think they will take a close look? Uh, many funds, institutional funds, uh, like minimum market caps, and our market caps still, I say at 50p, it's around 50, 55 million sterling. That's still very small. Uh, most of the big gold funds want, uh, and the generalist funds don't even invest in companies with less than 100 or $200 million market capitalization. So part of the reason you haven't got major institutions in this because the universe of fund managers that can invest in juniors is incredibly small. I mean, BlackRock, one of the biggest global mining funds in the, in the world, they can write, they write out tickets for, they take $50 million positions in single mining companies. So you know, we just, the market cap's too small for many of these specialist mining funds that you're referring to. Okay, so let's see what's, uh, you know, what is- In terms of when would they be interested? It's possible if we go through the construction financing and let's say we did a, a $20, $30 million placement, that's, that would be an entry point for a mining fund to say, oh, I, I will, will take $5 million or something. But it's the, the bigger funds are that kind of ticket size. And with the cycle being up in gold, they might be moving a little bit down the value chain, i.e. the gold producers, of many of them have moved up seven times. The gold explorers pre-development that are unfunded haven't. Uh, and so there might be an entry point for some of those. When would they come in? Probably in the financing capital of the equity component of that. Okay, you to, uh, you mentioned about gold and gold price, which uh, you know gold is, uh, is holding quite well, and it looks twenty twenty one will be still a very good year. Where do you see the gold price going from now? Um, well, Bank of America put a target of $3,000 an ounce gold by the end of next year, uh, 2021. Um, I think we're in a secular uptrend on gold. We've had a recent pullback because of the ETF selling <clears throat> and the fear trade has been off, i.e. the vaccines are coming out and <clears throat> the ETF funds have, um, that there's been some selling of ETF on that and risk on. But ultimately, we still have real interest rates. That's after, after taking into account inflation at minus 1% globally. And that's, so, so there's, there's, there's no cost to holding gold, but there is actually of uh, having your money in a bank account, uh, $15 trillion worth of debt, which is negative yielding around the world. These are very important cyclical backdrops. And all the debt that's being created, four trillion under Trump's presidency, US dollars, is gonna get inflated away. Uh, so the Fed, Fed is now gonna have higher inflation, gold is, uh, a hedge against inflation, as anyone with Zimbabwe dollars knows, or the German Weltmarkt Republic knows, and they're going history. So I think the secular long-term bull market in gold for the next five, six years is, is very much intact and alive. We have a short-term correction now. So I'd see gold higher um, over the course of the next uh, three years. Okay, fantastic. Last question. What are your expectations for 2021 and also the key events and catalysts that investors should look for? Right, well, the first three months, we'll start site preparation this year over the next few weeks and we'll be clearing the land over the processing plant facility, access roads, infrastructure roads, um, anything to do with around the processing plant stockpile. Uh, and that'll take three to four months to do in early next year. And we've already created two viewing platforms. And so that'll be clear cut. So we can show investors, we've got the land, here's the plant layout and so on. We'll finalize the CapEx number. As I said, we've already made the investment decision. We'll announce that uh, we're going with the, with the smaller plant, I think of 1,500 tons a day. And at four grams, that'll still give 60, 70,000 ounces of gold and lots of free cash flow, but it's a minimum CapEx, high grade at maximum production. We'll have good drill results, um, I think, because we're infill drilling in high grade pits at 4,000 meters. We'll put 8,000 meters of drilling on the Steezer next year. 
um, we've got the jewelry lined up and uh, will be will, is due to come in January. So we'll be announced the commencement of that drill program. We are now about 57% of the engineering studies on the tailing storage facility and the water retention dam. Um, that will be completed by May. So we fully engineer or bankable feasibility study level and fully, pretty much fully engineered on those two studies. The site-wide water balance, which is all the water management system uh, for rainfall and for uh, streams coming through the project is around about 40% complete. We have input diversion channels and so on. We have an SRK specialist coming in the first week of January. So it's de risk de risk de risk We'll get the balance of the land, that's sort of 5%. Um, that's not gonna be a problem. And it, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, I hope we start the heavy engineering as well uh, next year on the, on the plant. Um, perhaps we get a Tolmaning uh, agreement coming through to add some early cash flow. Um, so those are things to look for. Well, there are quite quite a few things and uh, look forward to see the next uh, the next news coming very soon. OK, thank you. Stavano. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. It was great to have you on the show. Thanks. So this is everything from the Financial Fox today. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media to make sure that you are updated with our next interviews and special guests. I will see you next time.